My name's Dave DeBow, founder of MoneyPartnerFormula.com, and this show is built for everyday real estate investors who are actively doing deals and looking to scale using other people's money. So if you're an active real estate investor and you want to get featured on the show to talk about your own real estate and capital raising experiences, then just go to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now let's get rolling with this episode and remember to subscribe for daily interview content. Well, I'll tell you what, I interview a lot of people on this show and most people book in their interviews at reasonable hours, but today's guest, <laughs> Natasha Figali, is zooming in all the way from Kuwait and at the time that we are interviewing this, it's three o'clock in the morning, her time. So talk about dedication. Natasha is a real estate entrepreneur, usually based in Windsor, Ontario. She's done a bunch of different things. I think she's a teacher by trade originally. She's a, uh, an active real estate investor. She's a property manager. She's getting her master's degree overseas and starting to poke around looking at investing in the Middle East. So Natasha, we've got lots to talk about. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Dave. And I mean, look who's talking, right? I've been following you for many years now, actually. And um, I know you're very active in so many real estate groups that I, I am a part of, and I've seen so much of your work, actually. Well, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. So Natasha, I mean, I was looking at your website, I was looking at your, your bio and everything. You have and you are doing a lot in real estate, but walk us back a little while and, and show me, tell me how you got into it in the first place. What was it that sparked your interest? Um. So, you know, Dave, in 2014, actually, um, my real estate journey is a little bit different than some other people's. I actually had like a life changing event. And it completely changed the trajectory of, of, of my life and my, my professional outlook. And so after that, I... Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. You can't just tell us I had a life-changing event yeah. and, it, and everything changed. After that. You, you piqued too much curiosity there, Natasha. Can you share what the life-changing event was? Yeah, actually, I was um, set to receive, so funny, I was set to receive an award, and I was start doing my master's, and I was, um, I, something had happened with a superior, mm. and it just clicked in my mind at that moment that I need to make sure that I always have a backup plan, uh. and so... I decided I was doing makeup on a movie set and uh, which is like a hobby. And uh, uh, one of the gentlemen there was a real estate investor and I was so distraught and so devastated. Mm -hmm. And I had gotten, because of the stress, I had gotten a mild case of Bell's palsy. And so I was telling this gentleman who was one of the producers and he was like, oh, I don't even work anymore. And I was like, oh, okay. And he's like, yeah, I'm an active real estate investor and I have passive income. Now I was kind of born into this because when my family first came to Canada, this is what they, they had gotten into. Okay. And my grandparents had a pretty big portfolio, but throughout the years they had sold everything. And like, by the time I was born, they had already sold everything. There was maybe like one building left that my dad was, uh, my, my, well, my parents were looking after. And so I didn't know too much about it. And I went home and I was, so I told my mom about this and she started talking to me about like our family and like what they had done and were doing. And so I went literally within that week after learning a little bit more from this gentleman who became a mentor of mine. And I bought my first duplex and this is in okay. 2014. Nice. Nice. And, uh, I had no money. I had no money. What whatsoever. I had borrowed $4,000 from my mom and that's what I used, uh, that 4,000 and another, my brother came on as also an investor, but then I bought him out after and I that's how you got started, that's where I started. by hook and yeah. by crook you made it happen awesome well thanks for thanks for sharing a little bit of uh, the backstory there 
it's funny how sometimes the crappy things that happen in our lives turn out to be that blessing in disguise and just kind of give you give you that umph to get going which where you might not have otherwise right so it's it is yeah. it's interesting how the universe works or god or whatever you want to what it, whatever reson, resonates with you so yeah thanks for sharing that okay so you bought the first duplex 2014 kind of quickly where where did your trajectory take you there and and how the heck did you end up in uh, kuwait <laughs> yeah so i i bought the first property and from that I actually bought that property and came, uh, worked abroad again for two years. So I bought a house, a duplex. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know nothing. And I, and I left, I went overseas. I mean, thanks goodness. Those tenants didn't take me for a ride. <laughs> uh, they were wonderful people. I sold that property when I went back uh, to Canada in 2017. That was when, um, I mean, I guess it depends how you, you look at it, but that's what, when the market was really hot. Yeah. And so I sold that and then I, I tripled that. I went, I got some more passive and I started learning what investing really is. Yeah. Brought on some passive investors nice. and from then just kept buying and selling, buying and selling. Okay. So uh, what, we, what kind of properties were you buying and selling and, and do you hold any at this point or, or have you kind of yeah, uh, uh, right now we have 23 doors. Mm -hmm. Um, Four of which are are not going to be done until the future, <laughs> the near future. And we have bought and sold in between that time. Uh, oh my gosh, so funny. Like, you know, sometimes you got to think about it, right? Because it's yeah. like other people are doing all the work. And it's like, I got to think about it. In that time, we bought and sold about five properties in nice. between that time. I I like to hold but I'm starting to change the way I look at that before I had a really big, like emotional attachment. Mm -hmm. Now I'm starting to look at it as they're made to be bought and sold. Nice. When, when the time is right, when, when the market right. is right. Yeah. When the numbers are right, they're made to be bought and sold. I don't know. Well, if that's I, I think that's definitely true in a market like Ontario, which just, you know, especially in the recent history has just tended to go up, 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 up. It, it, yeah. That definitely makes sense. Other markets, maybe holding on to them longer might make more sense. But I hear what you're saying, yeah. there, Natasha. So what what's been your what's your, been your big epiphany over the last year or two that's kind of making you change how you're looking at it and, and look at where you're investing? So, um, as I said when when we first started, I follow a lot of the. Um, you know, giants like yourself who are in real estate investing, especially across Canada. And I, I've been really thinking to myself, like, where am I going to take this now? You know, I branched out in 2020 and we started investing in other provinces. So we span across Canada now. Who's, who's we? Uh, myself and the other investors who are involved. Good. Uh, so I, I've, I've changed that to other provinces, I, I really started, you know, um, looking at different markets and how we can really maximize our income. Now I'm starting to think that I'd like to expand either cross border into the United States, which has kind of been a dream of mine, and or internationally, as I mentioned to you in other markets abroad, where we could also maximize. Like still, of course, keep our portfolio in Canada, but just looking at other markets abroad that might be interesting and see how we can, you know, sort of tap in into those markets. Yeah. And I don't know why lately, I think because I've also been watching investors abroad as well and how they they do things. I mean, it's, it's really, Dave, it's all very similar. It's all the same formula, pretty much. Mm -hmm. And... I've started to realize that it's good to hold properties, of course, but sometimes you have to leverage those properties and either refinance or sell them or maybe even bring on other investors to sort of free up some cash so that you can scale. So you can go into look at other markets and and expand and, and go where it makes more sense, potentially. Exactly. Okay, so, and so, so talk to us a little bit about the Middle East, because, 
you know, I've interviewed a ton of people that are investing south of the border in the U.S. of A. You're the first person okay. I've talked to that's that's seriously looking at the Middle East. So maybe what what have been your insights? So I have primarily focused on the United Arab Emirates for where I would take my investment next because of a few factors and one of them being they have a very large plan for population growth. Mm. So over here, we wouldn't call people immigrants because they're not really immigrating here. You, you cannot apply for citizenship or anything. You sort of get like a visa, 100 year visa and they're expat workers and mainly they come from all over the world. Wow. So the Emirates is looking at doubling their population within the next five to 10 years. Wow. And they are what, is, what, is, what is the population? Small. What's the population? It's, like four, it's only 4 million, yeah. but they want to double that. They have lots of plans for new investments, new developments, and they're making it very easy for investors. I qualified for a mortgage in 20 minutes. That's how, it, yes. And the properties, they have so many different payment plans and their mortgage rates are set at 6.75. They never change. That's the rate period. It's also really easy to set up a corporation and it's tax-free. Wow. I can yeah. see. I, that sounds like, like a commercial. <laughs> well, no, I'm, I asked, right? I'm I'm yeah. asking and you've done the, the research, you've done the homework. Okay. Yeah. That all sounds great what's the downside because there's, there's never all sunshine and flowers so what what are the potential pitfalls that you can see right the the downside would always of course be a market crash um i to to my knowledge like they're very much aligned with the us and with uk they're they're they follow pretty much their financial sector and um their economics are closely linked um however with that being said that's not so much what I focus on as much as they have very similar tenant laws to what we would have see in Ontario. Mm. So that's one area where I'm a little bit kind of worried because sometimes if you're not there, as, as we know, um, with property management companies, you know, you really have to stay on top of things, especially if you're an out of town investor Mm -hmm. So that, that those are the two areas that I, I guess, see where, you know, I want to do a little bit more research to make sure that my investment is safe. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. So a lawyer uh, overseas know, is so expensive. <laughs> that, well, that was the other question I was going to ask is, you know, what are, what kind of prices are you looking at for properties? Like, a, I don't even know what a standard or an average living abode would be like there are they mostly condos townhouses yeah. apartments single family homes yeah. all of the above what what would you kind of be looking at well you know dave it's uh it's a it's all of the above it's all of the above they're all new developments luxury mainly luxury if you know anything about the gulf countries it's mainly all um very luxurious and so what we're looking at right now is a one bedroom, which is priced around 200,000. And so we are either going to do the mortgage, which would be 60, 40 loan to value, or we're going to do the payment plan, which is a two year payment plan, a fixed rate every single month until handover. Fixed rate payment plan to pay the whole thing off. Uh, you would pay up until handover and then you could pay the balance at handover or take a mortgage after. And the mortgage you would get would be 60% loan to value? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very good. Yeah. And, uh, but you can go up from there. I mean, Dave, you can get houses there for a hundred oh. million dollars. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just wondering. So, so that's like a one bedroom uh, condo apartment type thing, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah, what's your best guess? And what's your best guess on what rents would be for something like that in cash flow? So, so far, what we have now would be anywhere from, depending on the location that we choose. And of course, we definitely want like an A or B neighborhood. 
which of course what, what that would mean is like good metro system, you know, built within the last 10 years, close to amenities in schools, because you know, some developments are far out. Yeah. Uh, so anywhere from like 50,000 in say a C or D neighborhood to 90,000 dirhams, which would be in a A or B neighborhood, I'm we're looking at probably maybe around a thousand dollars cash flow a month in Canadian dollars would be around a thousand a month, a little bit less mm -hmm. because the tenant is responsible for all of the utilities, but we would pay like a prop, like a, they don't call it property tax. It's more of a, like a condo fee, but yeah. that condo fee is inclusive of everything to take care of the grounds. And well, I, I mean, for a lot of Canadians listening to that go, wow, $200,000 property, thousand dollars a month cash flow that's way better than what we can get back home hence why you're seriously looking at it that's for sure okay very very cool so forgive my ignorance because i've never been there and it's the typical well i don't know this is lots of stereotypes right so not having visited the area myself we've got i've got all these images of yes sheiks with Rolls Royces and luxury stuff and all that stuff. I also have memories of that's what Kuwait was like. And then something terrible happened and got invaded and wars and up unrest and terrorism and all that kind of stuff. So all of these things are kind of floating around in my head. What do you say like to a, to a ditz like myself, that's got a lot of stereotypes about the middle, about the middle East. Oh, no, 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 no. A lot of people feel the same way. I get a lot of questions. However, I don't believe that that, um, you know, of course, history is history. However, going forward, most of the countries in the Middle East have a plan of action, including uh, Saudi Arabia. I did a few podcasts last year when I was in Saudi Arabia and all of the new developments that they have there and their their. The, the main target, their market is uh, like North America, Westerners, global, to have a second property, a retirement property. And they're they're really doing a lot to uh, bring investors in, you know, to, uh, like I said, giving golden visas, giving uh, entrepreneur visa, podcast visa, whatever visa, golden visas, retirement, they're even started now a new thing called retirement visas for retirees. You wow. know, the, with the, the weather is, is really, really good for you when, when you're a senior, I, I guess. I don't, I don't know. We're not there yet, but um, some of us are so closer no. than you are, Natasha. So, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I would say when it comes to safety and security, I, I personally have never experienced anything. And to tell you the truth, Dave, there are so so many Canadians coming abroad now and investing abroad because you get your your money goes quite a long way. Although I'm I'm still I'm still buying in Canada actively, but uh, I know as as to open the portfolio and create new pathways of investment. I have spoken to so so many Canadians that are coming and in investing abroad. Oh, that's wonderful, Natasha. Well, thank you very much for shedding a little bit of light on your thought process. I'm curious, um, you're on a two-year sabbatical. You're studying in Kuwait right now. Yeah. What, what What is your master's in, if you don't mind? Well, sharing. I'm an educator by trade, yeah. and I still work actively in education. But as I told you, I'm on leave, and I'm doing my master's in education, actually. It's my that master's is... um, in, in curriculum design. So, you know, uh, I was very lucky, but I, I'm going to tell you, Dave, it's really hard to run a business on a different time zone. Mm. I mean, you're calling people at like midnight, 11 o'clock at night. You know, it's, it, it is a challenge. I'm not going to lie. It, even though I have a wonderful team who really helped me a lot, it, it is a challenge. So, oh, uh, yeah, I hear you. It, it's, 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 it's been quite a ride. Yeah, definitely. Natasha, if people are interested in connecting with you and, and finding out more about you and your journey and what you're up to, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, all of my socials are linked together and it is at N-E Pagali, F-E-G-H-A-L-I. And you can email me on there as well or go to my website and 
uh, send me a message from there or, or, or an email and I'm, I'm happy to answer questions. Fantastic. Well, Hey, get some sleep and thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you so much. All right, everybody take care. We'll see you on the next episode. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed that episode. And as always, if you want to listen to more daily interview content, make sure you subscribe. And if you're an active real estate investor and you're doing deals and you'd like to get featured on this show, then just head over to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now at MoneyPartnerFormula.com, we help real estate investors to create a process for predictably getting capital so they can do more deals without relying on hard money lenders or the banks. We do this by building them a private capital marketing system. Now, if you want help turning yourself into a big money capital attraction machine, then book a call with our team to see how we can help. Just visit moneypartnerformula.com to find out more. All right, take care and we'll see you on the next interview.